Shalom sisters, most high in Christ bless you all. Welcome to another edition of The Real Talk Table. This is where the talk at the table gets what? It gets real. It gets real at the table. I'd like to introduce to you Sister Avia. Sister mm -hmm. Avia is from the house of Elder Yaquim. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many of you know it, but this is the beautiful face behind Self-Care Sunday. <laughs> Self-Care Sunday, as you may have figured out, is a platform that is used to inform and, and enlighten us on women and mental health. Mm -hmm. So today's Will Talk Table is just an extension of Self-Care Sunday. So sisters, I want you all to sit back, get your snacks, relax, and prepare to take notes on taking care of yourself not just on Sundays, but every day. Every day. <clears throat> so welcome to the Real Talk Table. And today's topic is self-care every day. Sister V, I'm giving the table to you. All righty. Let us get into it. So before we get started, I do want to give a content and a trigger warning because this is some serious and sensitive subject matter. You know, if you're not if you're not able to handle it or if you need to kind of prepare yourself to go into it, that's totally fine. This is what this is for. So we will be going into mental health. I'm going to be talking about mental illness, um, depression, suicide, things like that. So that's your warning, just so you know. That's what we're getting into today. All right. <clears throat> so... First off, let's get into a couple of definitions, some terms that we need to know. So number one, um, Amita, do you mind reading that for me? Number one is self-care. These are terms that you should know, sisters. Mm -hmm. Self-care, the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health. Right, so self-care is pretty self-explanatory. It's taking care of yourself, doing what you have to do to make sure you are your healthiest and your best self. And our second definition? Mental health. A person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. So everyone has mental health. Sometimes people will say, oh, oh, she, she's dealing with mental health. But they really mean to say mental illness, like there's an issue going on. Mm -hmm. But everyone has mental health. That's just your state of mind, your mental being. So everyone has mental health. And our last definition. Mental illness. A disorder that can cause psychological and behavioral disturbances with varying severity. So this is the opposite. You know, if you have, everyone has mental health, right? Everyone's got a mental state. But someone with a mental illness, <clears throat> excuse me, their mental, their mental state is got some disturbances something that is diagnosable, something that, you know, affects their behavior, just the way that they're functioning, all right? So let's be clear on what's mental health and what's mental illness. Okay, so let's do a little recap here. Mm. What you're telling me is mental health is something everybody has. Mm -hmm. Men, women, children. Right. We all have health in regards to our mental health state or frame right. of mind, where mental illness is when there is possibly an imbalance in that health. Exactly. In the mental health. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm learning. Exactly. That's I think we're going to be learning some stuff We're going to learn a lot today, for sure. All praises. There all praises. So, we are talking about self-care. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of different layers that goes into self-care. You might think, oh... I'm gonna do a face mask today, I'm doing my self care, or I'm gonna treat myself. You heard that, treat yourself. Mm. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna get my favorite snack and I'm just gonna stay home and not do anything. You know, that's self care. But, you know, there's levels to it. It's not just about, oh, treat yourself and just be lazy and, you know, there's a lot more to it. So, you know, I like to think of it as parenting yourself. You know, when you become an adult, you have to take care of yourself the same way your parents took care of you as a child. Mm -hmm. So, again, self-care has a lot of layers. So what we're going to get into is 
the four pillars of self-care. So, you ready? I'm ready. Number one is the mental. If you don't mind reading that for me, that first one. Okay. The first one is creativity and personal development. Having hobbies and learning new skills are essential to stimul stimulating your mind and keeping you occupied with something positive. All right. So that is one part of taking care of yourself on the mental level. You want to make sure that you're keeping your mind engaged. You have different hobbies. You know, we know the scriptures say that it's not good to be idle, but that's for a lot of reasons. It's not just to keep you out of trouble, which... That's mostly what we hear, right? Mm. But being idle can also affect your mental health. If you're not doing anything, you know, you're not, you're not keeping yourself engaged, you're not doing something positive, you're not being productive, that can cause an issue. It can keep you just kind of like, eh, you know, you're just not, you might get brain fog, you're not really, you're just not stimulating your mind, and that's very important. Same way, you know, as a kid, kids get bored and they start getting into trouble adults do the same thing we just you know you're not doing anything and that that really doesn't lead to anything good but you know what I actually heard there when you first started out giving us some clarity on this is the scriptures mm -hmm. there's a scripture that actually tells us that we should keep ourselves busy it sure does all praises all praises <coughs> <coughs> excuse me all right so we have another way, it's using affirmations. So these can be using inspiring quotes, using scriptures, uh, making sure that you have positive self-talk, which is you know, how you're speaking to yourself, being encouraging. You know, these are all good ways to motivate yourself and build confidence and self-esteem. Okay, I was looking for that scripture. Oh yeah, we should get that for the idleness. Mm -hmm. Thirty three and twenty seven. Patience, my sisters, be patient with <laughs> us. Thirty three and twenty seven, you said? Yes, ma'am. Sarah in the Apocrypha, the same as Ecclesiasticus, chapter thirty three and verse twenty seven. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for idleness teaches much evil. So, mm -hmm. I mean, not only do we need to stay busy for mental health reasons, mm -hmm. the scriptures tell us idleness leads to evil. Right. So, hmm, interesting so thought. You get into trouble if you're not, you know, keeping yourself <coughs> occupied. Excuse me. So uh, the second one would be the affirmation. So like we said, those are inspiring quotes, using the scriptures, using uh, positive self-talk. These are all things that can help you to motivate yourself and build your confidence and your self-esteem. You know, I like to um, post a lot of quotes around on my wall. I know some people like to write little notes to themselves on the mirror and things mm -hmm. like that, you know, just to keep yourself motivated and to boost yourself up because you know, it's good to have other people do that, but it starts with you, you know? Yes, at the end of the day, you're responsible for you. Mm-hmm. Very true. So, yeah, it starts with you. I want to be able to help you, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to help yourself. Right. So, hmm. Okay. And that's why it's called self-esteem. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I have bad self-esteem because everyone else treats me this way. And it's like, <laughs> well, sis, <laughs> self-esteem is called self-esteem for a reason. You have to... <laughs> You got to work through those things yourself. Imagine that. I know. Wow. Self what? Self. <laughs> We're using Me. that word a lot today, huh? Me be accountable. What's the, what's the, uh, what's the title? What's self the topic? Self-care. Self-care every day. Okay. Self-esteem. Uh, self mm -hmm. Self-care. Hmm. I, I'm liking where this is going. And a lot of this, what we're going to go into today, your mental health and, and managing that, that self-care, is really about self-examination. The scriptures go into that a lot. We know that. Oh, this is and it's, serious. Yeah, it's not just a, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not feeling well and I got all these things. No, it's, it's some serious work. 
Well, and so far what I'm hearing is mental health or mental illness mm -hmm. is real. Mm -hmm. But we're learning today there's some things that we can do to handle it. Absolutely. And, you know, alleviate some of the issues that it may cause. May mm -hmm. not get rid of it totally, mm -hmm. but help cushion definitely the effects. Okay. Yeah, it's very okay. It's, we're gonna find out some tips today, things that you can do to manage everything. So the second pillar is the physical. Uh, do you mind reading that one? Oh, this is a good one. Physical. Mm -hmm. What 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 is that word? E X E <laughs> <laughs> oh, exercise. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. Exercise. Working out can relieve stress and improve sleep. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. It says here to find movement that you enjoy and that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. That's an important one. I know that. You know, sometimes for people, working out can be like a punishment. Like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get myself together. I gotta get in here and, you know, just work out till I pass out. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> and if that's, that's you know, if that's your <laughs> mo, hey, <laughs> you know, that's great. You're working hard, but you know, just on the on the strength of helping out your mental health, there's a lot of other benefits. You can really relax yourself. You know, when you're working out, you release endorphins. That's like mm -hmm. the happy chemical in your brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it relieves stress. A lot of times when you're working out, it can help your sleeping patterns. Your body is, like, getting into a good rhythm. Well, and, you know, you made the comment, work out till you pass out. That's not defi necessarily the definition of working out mm -hmm. or exercising. Yeah. I mean, for me, a good workout and a good exercise is walking. Mm-hmm. As simple as a walking simple one, yeah. with a good stride. Mm -hmm. And it amazes me how just that simple act within itself can clear your thoughts. Can it clear really your can, mind. yeah. I mean, just walking. Now, if you're into that heavy-duty workout, okay, that's, <laughs> that's you. Good for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm, that, that doesn't work for me. Just let me get a walk. Or right. Not a stroll, but a good dice. A good little walk. brisk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that works for me. But all of that to say, you know, Exercise is different for each individual. Mm -hmm. What exercise is to me may not be exercise is to you. So, right. like, I made a little joke about exercise. What is that? <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody may not approach exercise in the same way, but just mm -hmm. know that your exercise doesn't have to be the weightlifter's mm -hmm. exercise regimen. Right. You know, that's why I put, you got to find something that you enjoy that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. My go-to is, like, yoga and, like, I really like swimming. Those are some that, you know, it just makes me feel good. And it's good to get your body moving. And like I said, it helps with your stress, your sleep patterns. There's a lot of benefits. So even if you don't make, like, a crazy workout regimen, just try to get moving somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Very good one. I see the next one is eating habits. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Try to have a variety of foods and eat intuitively. Mm -hmm. Stay hydrated. Now, I'm going to ask you, what does that mean, eat intuitively? So eating intuitively is really just about listening to your body. You know, making sure, ah. oh, I'm getting a, my body is telling me I'm hungry. I need to eat. You know, making sure that you're just eating when you're supposed to. You're not ignoring it. You're not mm -hmm. under eating or overeating, and just eating like the scriptures say was sufficient for you. Well, and you know that brings ooh, my little mind is just working today. It's working. <laughs> well, we talk about eating and you eating intuitively, listening mm -hmm. to your body and what your body needs. But when you went to explaining it, I heard also um, sometimes we starve ourselves. For whatever reason, we think we're overweight or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want to eat so much, so I'm not going to eat anything at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our eating habits lead to other disorders. Mm -hmm. Is it a possibility that your eating habit could lead to 
a mental illness? Oh, absolutely. Or play a part in a mil- mental illness? Yeah, definitely. There's it really can work both ways because you can have certain eating habits that become disordered mm-hmm. and then becomes a full-blown eating disorder, which is considered a mental illness. And then on the flip side, you know, take people that deal with depression, for example. Mm-hmm. Some people tend to overeat when they're depressed because it's like, mm-hmm. like comfort eating. And then some people, when they're depressed, they really don't eat that much. So it's different ways, and it can affect on both sides. So it's something to watch. But, okay, so my, my, let me ask the question a different way. So I made the comment about starving myself because I think I'm overweight. Mm-hmm. Um, could that lead to me having a mental disorder? Mm-hmm. Could that start the process of the mental? You, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying, okay, I was fine until I started having issues with my, my body. Mm-hmm. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm not liking what I see. <clears throat> so I start starving myself to death in hopes of losing weight. But mm-hmm. we, I know, anyway, that's a, another topic right. for another day. But now that has triggered something in my mind Mm -hmm. that leads to other problems. Okay. okay, Definitely. Okay. Okay. So that's why it's important to eat intuitively, listening to your body, knowing your personal needs and having that variety of foods, you know, try to get, you know, switch things up. For me, I'm kind of a picky, I'm I'm very much a picky eater. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to downplay it. (laughs) (laughs) I can eat the same things, you know, kind of often. So... You know, I try to switch things up, you know, make sure I get smoothies in and things like that for certain mm-hmm. nutrients. So, and staying hydrated for sure. Well, and you know, that makes me also think of a quote that I've seen maybe on social media somewhere, someone has said it or whatever. Do you live to eat or eat to live? Mm-hmm. And if we one. think about food in that way, that would probably change the look of the plate mm-hmm. in front of us. That is a good point. That's something your sister should really think about. Are you mm-hmm. living to eat or eating to live? And I know it's a lot of us out there that's living to eat. Mm-hmm. We enjoy our food and we're not ashamed of it. Mm-hmm. But keep in mind, the foods that you take in plays a part on your overall health from head to toe. Mm-hmm. Head, mental Toes, bad feet. <laughs> <laughs> it affects gout, everything. Gout. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, people talk about, oh, I got the gout. What is the gout? But I okay, don't want to know. <laughs> that's another subject for another day as well. <laughs> but okay, so oh for the physical side, we looked at exercise and our eating habits. Mm-hmm. Since you're giving us some really good information this afternoon a I lot. pray to the most high God that you sisters are taking notes mm-hmm. and are paying attention this may not affect you personally but I guarantee you it's probably somebody out there that you know that is dealing with some of these issues and mm-hmm. this this uh, real talk table today may give you some insight into how to deal with those people definitely and I'll honestly a lot of this information can really apply to everybody. If you have, if your mental health is okay, you may not be having a mental illness or anything. This still applies to you. All of these pillars of self-care is for everyone. And we, and we are going to go into, you know, how to deal with things for your personal level and how to help others. If, you, if you're okay, you don't have those issues. So, and take those notes. All right. Excuse me. So, and if you don't have those issues, that what we're doing today is called preventative. Absolutely. Preventative yep. care, preventative health, because these things are good for you, whether you suffer with the mental mm-hmm. illness or not. You should still be watching what you eat. You should still be exercising. You should still be doing little things of self care. Mm-hmm. You know, pampering yourself. Not to the extreme where you feel like you got to buy yourself a two hundred dollar pair of shoes. Right, self care doesn't paid. have to be expensive. Exactly, you know? <laughs> but taking care of yourself in spite of. So yeah, mm-hmm. okay, definitely. Come on, with it, girl. Come on. Alrighty, so we're moving on to the third pillar of self care, which is emotional. Now this one. 
This one is a this is a heavy one. And I really, really pray, sisters, listen to this because, you know, we all know we're the weaker vessel, as the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. We all know that we are created to be much more emotional. And within that, there are some people who are even more sensitive. I myself am what's considered a, a hypersensitive person. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm like super easily offended, but. What does that mean? It just means that I. I'm very in touch with my emotions. Like, I feel things on a real deep level. And that's for a lot of people are like that. So if that's you, if you feel like you're a real sensitive sister, or even if you're not, we all are naturally more emotional. So so if I cry easily, is that the same thing? Yeah, that, that might mean you're a little sensitive. Yeah, I cry. cry well, I cry. Probably cry like once a day. I'm just. <laughs> well, no, I don't cry that often. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I'm going to rephrase that. It, there was a time when you could say boo. And I said, <laughs> oh, she don't like me. <laughs> yeah, for me, you can ask my husband. I'll, I'll be scrolling and watch and see like a cute little animal video. And I'm just burst into tears because it's, it's just too cute. <laughs> it's overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, got to watch that e being emotional. So that third pillar. The first one is going to be boundaries. We were just talking about this a week ago, weren't we? Mm. Boundaries, mm. boundaries, boundaries. You want to read that for me? Boundaries. Prove all the relationships in your life. Know your limits and make them clear to others. Craft your social group to your needs. Man, and when you set those boundaries, don't keep moving the line mm -hmm. because they'll keep going they're gonna keep crossing it yeah exactly so okay go ahead i'm sorry boundaries no no that's i a got good excited point. when i saw that <laughs> this is this is gonna be a hot one because it's it's really needed so you know we all know we're supposed to prove a friend mm -hmm. and that goes for every relationship in your life we talked about that in the last real talk table right mm -hmm. not just you know someone that you're looking to to be a spouse you know also your counselors also just your friends that are in your circle. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally am really big on boundaries because you have to set boundaries because that shows people how you're going to allow them to treat you. Mm -hmm. So I have boundaries in every relationship that I have in my life. Now, if you don't have boundaries, what does that mean? People are going to treat you however they want to. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that's obviously not good. You can't let people take advantage of you. You can't put yourself in harmful situations. So, you know, know your limits. Know what you can handle, what you won't handle, what you're not going to tolerate. Mm -hmm. And like you said, don't keep moving that line. Stick to it. Yeah, because people take advantage of that. They, mm -hmm. they really do, whether they mean to or not. They, they will take advantage of in a sense, your weakness, because not allowing or not setting boundaries and sticking to them, it's a weakness on mm -hmm. your part. You're allowing people to manipulate mm -hmm. your space. Yep. So, yes, I, I really like that one because, believe it or not, for those of you out there who know me, there was a time where I didn't have boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know I have them now, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there was a time, and it wasn't that very long ago, that I didn't have boundaries, and it created chaos for me, mm -hmm. not for the other people. who They were, were cool crossing your boundaries. Exactly. <laughs> it was causing problems for me. Mm -hmm. Stress. Yep. I mean, one. huge stress. I mean, I was always stressed out, and it had to do with, you know, allowing people to manipulate my character. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's a big one. You and, and a lot of people don't know what their boundaries are. So right. that's where you really got to start with yep. knowing what your boundaries are. You can't set a boundary if you don't know what the boundary is, mm -hmm. what your limit is. Okay, I can only take this much. And when it gets to this point, I'm out. Right. I think of an example, you know, some boundaries that I have are, you know, how I want to be respected. So if, if I tell somebody, hey, 
you know, the way you just came at me right there, the way you're trying to speak to me, that's not going to fly. That's not okay. That's, that's, this is the boundary right here. Don't, don't do that again. Don't cross this line. Mm -hmm. Now, that's me setting that boundary, right? The next time this person wants to speak to me that same way, they are crossing the boundary, and what am I supposed to do? Just ignore it? Just be like, oh, here they go again. That's how they are. No. Enforce your boundaries. If you set a boundary, it's only going to work if you continue to enforce it. Mm -hmm. if you, when that happens again, hey, we talked about this. Remember? That's not okay. Mm -hmm. That's not how I want to be treated. And, you know, stop doing it. And when you're new at setting those boundaries, those old people in your life are going to test you. They'll guilt she trip you. She don't really mean that. <laughs> well, why? I know she didn't mean that. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. They try see. to make you feel bad for it. Like, girl, you, you being sensitive, you don't, you don't mean that. You better stand your ground mm -hmm. in order to keep your sanity. Yeah. In order to keep your mental health, mm -hmm. your well-being. Yeah. Yes. Like you said, it causes it causes chaos. Oh That's, gosh, things get out of hand. You know, in your life, they skip off lolly da da, and you over there like doing what they want to do, and you're just yeah. like, oh god, <laughs> they're draining. So, you know, you don't want draining people around what, you. What 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 emotional draining. vampires, spiritual vampires, spiritual emotional vampires. vampires. It's all There's kinds. all kinds of vampires <laughs> running around all out there. Kinds. Oh my. <laughs> And that is why it's important to craft your group. You know, just like when you're on social media, sometimes people will say, ah, social media is so terrible, you know, spend too much time on it, which some of us do. <laughs> but, you know, the way I look at it is it's what you make it. Hmm. So you got to curate your timeline to what you want to see, what's beneficial to you. Same way with the people around you. You need people that are supportive, people that are understanding, People that go by the scriptures is going to call you out when you need to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just overall, people that are good for your mental health. All places. I love that boundary setting thing. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys wrote that down. Set so. boundaries. That's for everybody, even mm -hmm. your little children. I'm yeah. talking to somebody out there. Set a boundary <laughs> for that little baby because babies are wise. They will take advantage of you quicker than an adult mm -hmm. will. Hear me when I tell you. I know. <laughs> okay, the next one, uh, Avia, is processing emotions. Mm -hmm. Be sure to let yourself feel what you feel and let it go. Don't bury or ignore your emotions. They will turn into unresolved issues. That's a heavy one. <clears throat> you know, a lot of times when we feel negative emotions like anger or sadness obviously that doesn't feel good it's not something we want to sit with mm -hmm. so sometimes we'll kind of shame ourselves for it like oh i'm so sorry i was upset about this even if you had like if i if you had a right to be mad about something mm -hmm. <laughs> you know sisters tend to be like i'm sorry i was upset i just i shouldn't have been mad but it's like you know, the scripture says be angry and sin not. It didn't say don't be angry. God gave us all the emotions that he has. So we're, you're not wicked for feeling angry or feeling sad or irritated. Whatever the negative emotions are, well, basically, it's just about how you deal with it. What you just said is, I can't get mad at you getting mad at me for doing something stupid. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> You're not going to guilt trip me, <laughs> make okay. me feel bad, because you made me mad and I had it right. And those people exist, too. What mm -hmm. kind of vampire is that? Because you have those people that know they did something wrong, but they are making you feel bad because you calling them out on mm -hmm. their wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. There's, there's people out there yeah, like that, and no. that's, <laughs> I have very clear boundaries with people like that, because... No, <laughs> it's not going to fly. But, you know, when, when you have those emotions, it's not, there might be bad emotions or whatever you, have, whatever you want to call it, but the issue comes in if you're not dealing with it properly. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, be angry and sin not. I can be angry with you, and that's okay. I can sit with that and process that emotion, and afterwards, 
We don't have to talk and let it go. Mm-hmm. That's Just what that because you're mad at me, you can't kill me. Exactly. Like, <laughs> that would be a sin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, hmm. you know, also with sadness, if you feel sad and it's like, you know, it's kind of overwhelming, you can't really shake yourself out of it so quickly. Like, you want to try and, you know, get yourself upbeat, go do something that you like and spend time with somebody that's going to make you feel good. But sometimes, I'll be honest, it's not that easy. Sometimes it's like this feeling is lingering. You know, you can't bury it. You just got to sit with it for a second. Sometimes you got to get a good cry out. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, let it pass. Sometimes that's what you have to do. Because if you have these negative emotions coming up and you don't deal with them, you shame yourself for them, you know, you just try to ignore it. What you're doing is creating something that's going to blow up later. It's going to be an unresolved thing. And you don't know what's going to come up. Mm -hmm. But you just got to feel what you feel and let it go. Okay, so my take from that is to acknowledge what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, and once you acknowledge what you're feeling, you can deal with what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I may be sad. Okay, I can accept that I'm sad. But, okay... Because I know I'm sad and I know what sadness does for me or to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit up in this house by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and take a walk maybe. Mm -hmm. Or I, I'll All right. So for the last pillar of self-care, we are going on to the spiritual. Now, this one is another major one, probably the most important. I would think when you say spiritual, say. it makes me think of the most high. It's number one. It makes me think of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would think that it's we say one. the best for life. Absolutely. All praises. Come on, girl. So, <laughs> number one, what do you think is a big part of your spiritual self-care? Studying, right? Study, study, study. Makes sense to me. It makes sense, right? So, you know, I know... A lot of sisters are really busy, you know, those of us that work, some of us that are married, some of us that have kids, some of us that go to school, you know, and, and so many other things. People that have their personal businesses. There's a lot that's going on, right? We're trying to be Proverbs 31 women. We're not trying to be idle. So our schedules can be packed. But that's really not an excuse to not get into the scriptures because faith comes by hearing the word of God. If you're not hearing it, you're not reading it, if you're not getting it into your system every day, what's happening to your faith? Mm. It's not increasing. You gotta think about that. So if you're that busy, you know, try to listen to audio Bibles. Try to listen to, you know, play back the Sabbath class. We got the midweek meditations. We have uh, Brother Elijah's class on what, Sundays? Mm -hmm. We have Iron Sharp and Iron on Fridays. Mm -hmm. We have so many days where we have you know, the brothers are putting out great classes that you can listen to while you're doing the dishes, while you're getting the kids ready, you know. Keep it in the background. You know, sit down, listen to it while you're in the car, on your commute, you're going back home, you're going to work. There There's is so no many ways. excuse. There's no That's excuse. That's what I just heard. There is no There's excuse. There's no excuse. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how can you live a Christ-like life if you don't know what the scriptures say. Yep. And the Bible is a good example of how we need to operate. The Bible repeats everything over and over and mm -hmm. over. And all that's telling us is that we need these scriptures repeated to us exactly. over and over and over. You can never, ever, ever, ever listen to a class too many times. Mm -mm. You can never, ever, ever, ever read one scripture too many times. You'll always get something new out of it. And have you ever read a scripture and you're like, I don't remember that being in this book because mm -hmm. it's in another book. Right. It's repeated <laughs> and it's repeated for a purpose because we need repetition in our mm -hmm. lives to get it right. So studying is very important. It is. Oh, and another thing that I like to do is, um, you know, the U version Bible app. That's that's uh, my that's, that's my that's my favorite to. thing. I love it because sometimes you can feel like, oh, I need to study, but I don't know what to study right mm -hmm. now. There's mm -hmm. so the Bible is a big book. There's a lot to get into, 
And then, you know, maybe you're going through something personally and you're just like, I don't know where exactly to go to get the help that I need. It's these, these, uh, I feel like I'm an ad right now for this app because I, well, I really I'm, endorse it a lot. Look, and I'm with you. Did you know you, you can be friends with people? Like, it's almost yeah. like a social media. I think they just app. added, like, a prayer. Uh, I think it's did. like a prayer request type feature or something. Well, but I think it's another app. Oh, okay. Maybe it's, it's like a completely of it. Yes, it's okay. a completely different app from version, mm -hmm. but it's based on prayer. Okay. But it has a social media type platform mm -hmm. where you can be friends with people. And if you're studying, reading, liking a verse, highlighting mm -hmm. a verse or whatever, if I'm your friend and you make what you're doing public, I can see, see what, what you're, you're doing, doing and I can go like it. You know what else I like is you can read a, do a reading plan with somebody. Yes, ma'am. And guess what? Part. I'm ready, y'all. Can I toot my own horn? Mm. <laughs> this past week, using you version, mm -hmm. we're going to call them and see if we can get some money for this. For real, this is a whole using ad right you, now. <laughs> using you version, I completed for the very first time the entire Bible what? in a year. I did that oh, thing. Crazy. I did that thing. That's awesome. And it felt really good doing it. It Man, really did. So that's great. All praise is YouTube. And with those plans, not YouTube. Like, I'm sorry. You version. You version. <laughs> Let's get our. <laughs> this got y'all know right. this is this is live TV. This is not pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, those you know, there's a lot of ways. Basically, is what we're getting at. There's yes. A lot of ways to get the scriptures in. And those reading plans can be from three days to 12 days. You know, mm -hmm. you look up the topic that you need. Oh, you know, we're mm -hmm. talking about mental health. I need something to help me with my anxiety. Or mm -hmm. I read it's some there. reading plans on how, how do I fit more studying time into my schedule. Mm -hmm. They literally have those. So, again, there's no excuse. This is for your own benefit. This is for your building yourself up. If that's what you want to do, you know, you make time for it, right? Yes, ma'am. I would agree 100%. All right. So our next one is praying and fasting. Hmm. Now, this is something that, I'm going to be honest, I don't, I don't fast as often as I probably should. But, you know, we really should not underestimate the power of praying and fasting. Because you need to recharge your spirit <coughs> and you need to build that spiritual discipline. You know, these things are very powerful. What's the scripture? I'm going there. You getting there? <laughs> like, I should have wrote that one down, but it's one of my faves. But, you know, this is something that we have to do regularly, praying every day. You know, our forefathers, you know, take Daniel, for example. He used to be so committed. You know, you read about uh, Peter doing this as well. Where we had times of prayer. We would pray like three times a day. And now you have, you know, Muslims, they'll pray five times a day. That's a custom that they learned from our forefathers. So... You know, making sure that you're regularly checking in with the Most High, saying thank you for everything, giving, you know, being grateful, showing that gratitude, not just going when you need something, because the Most High is there for us, but, you know, you have to show that honor and respect to Him. You got to consistently be, you know, being mindful of Him every day. Um, I think what we're looking for is Matthew 17 and 21. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it says, how be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And, you know, that's not the only one. There's several that we could go to that talks about praying and fasting mm -hmm. and what praying and fasting can do. I mean, there's a lot. So that's an assignment for you guys to go look up those mm -hmm. scriptures on prayer and fasting and what it can do for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can get rid of. So many things. I mean, a lot. that one is one of my faves because it's talking about a spirit being removed. Mm -hmm. So in the okay, context yeah. of, of mental health, it's fitting. Yeah, that's perfect because, you know, there's been times where I've I've had, you know, really difficult episodes within my with men, managing my mental illness. And I've just had to, you know, stop, pray and fast. And it's really got me over some of those humps because. Sometimes the scriptures say there's just no other way. <coughs> so try to get that in regularly, you know, whether it's once a month, you know, once every two months, you know, more often, however, 
However, you need to train yourself to get into the habit of it. And that's something I'm speaking to myself. Because like I said, I should do it a lot more often than I do. I should too. And we shouldn't just be fasting once a year, Day of Atonement. <laughs> like, yeah. And, you know, it's got to be more it often a year, than that. You, you're probably not doing it well. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> it, that's practice. It requires you know? <laughs> practice. It really does. Yeah, for and sure. And I'm going to uh, throw a plug in there for uh, Focus Friday. I think I actually did a post on fasting and praying mm -hmm. and included some scriptures that uh, told us when in the scriptures our forefathers and foremothers fasted and prayed and why they did so. Mm -hmm. That lets us know what all, that gives us what the power of fasting and praying can do, mm -hmm. what it is. Exactly. <clears throat> all right. And the third and final within your spiritual self-care is fellowship. Now, this is a really important one because we already know the scripture says we commanded to congregate, right? Uh, mm. Now, if you can't, that's understandable, but you do what you got to do. You reach out to people. You got video chats. You got phones. Everybody's got access to these different, you know, platforms. So you got to figure out how to get that fellowship in. So when we're talking about self-care and mental health, you really absolutely need to build a support system. You need to surround yourself with people that are good for your mental health and to, that will help you thrive. You know, being around other believers is important because iron sharpens iron. You need people that are going to, like we said earlier, hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. You need people that are going to encourage you. Mm -hmm. You know, encourage you to take care of yourself, to do what you're supposed to be doing according to the scriptures, and really just be there you know for support overall and what is that scripture that talks about uh two are better than one because mm -hmm. when one falls the other can do what the other can pick them up hey right. the scriptures hmm. amen <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for and, and if you you know how can you fulfill those scriptures if you're constantly just by yourself or you're not making your effort to be around people like i said if you're in a, in a city or somewhere where you don't have access to be around other believers, you know, pick up the phone. Try to put yourself out there so that you can connect. There's other ways. We're in the 21st century. There's, you know, you don't have to no excuse. <laughs> walk days and days to get to somebody's house. So, yeah. you know, these things are possible if you really want to. to or build call yourself them up. and you get a busy signal. Y'all know that duh, duh, uh. duh. <laughs> they told you, well, they on the phone talking, they ain't Susie. <laughs> and they're going to be on the phone for four hours. So by the end, who knows what I will have done. That's, <laughs> right. that, that doesn't happen today. If, if you call me and I'm on the phone with somebody else, guess it's what? It's going to say, oh, hold on, girl. She calling. Let Your me, big old picture let me answer come this across the screen. <laughs> talk about, uh, Bea is calling. <laughs> so, yeah, again, no right. excuse. Mm -hmm. No excuse. That's important. So now it's time to really, really dig deep into the scriptures. We've been referencing a few but i really want to dig into this because when we think of self-care some people might think of something that's kind of new it's just been invented it's kind of just like a a trendy thing but we're gonna read some examples in the scriptures about self-care and also about mental illness because believe it or not our forefathers and foremothers dealt with these type of things too mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, my. Oh, yes. Okay, so I got a plan. If you'll agree with me, mm -hmm. I'll read the scripture, and then you can elaborate on it. That works for me. Does it work? Okay. It sure I can does. be of assistance. <laughs> um, the first scripture is 1 Corinthians 3. Chapter 3, verse 16. Wow. Can y'all see this? Oh, she got her sticky note on there marked. Look at there. The very <laughs> first one, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. So this must be a good scripture here, girl. Might be. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And there's a question mark behind this this scripture. So that's asking, do you know this? Do you know that your body is a temple? The spirit of God is within you? So what does that tell you? That sounds pretty important. 
Well, to be honest with you, it makes me feel obligated to treat me better. Mm. I love the way you put that. Okay. That's yeah. That's I mean, perfect. you know, it makes me feel obligated to treat me better because me ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> I love. <her. laughs> but that's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I couldn't I mean, say it better. <laughs> Me ain't mine. Me is <laughs> the most highs. Right. And if I say, if I feel how I say I feel about him, that's going to make me take pause and mm-hmm. think about what I'm doing. Exactly. It's really, you know, this, this makes me think of the quote um, that says, self-care is not selfish. And really, that's, that's really true. I think the quote comes from people feeling like, you know, I need to I need to do certain things to take care of myself and not feel bad because maybe I'm not going out with everyone or I'm you know that type of thing. But I, it kind of makes me think of that with this scripture is it's not selfish. It's not about you. You can't serve the most high effectively and to the best of your ability if you're not taking care of yourself. Right. How can you be a vessel? How can he How can he use you? And you know, there you go. How can he use you? Because if you're not taking care of yourself, how can I be any good to you? Mm-hmm. If I'm not good to me, how am I going to be good to you? Mm-hmm. So, yes. Exactly. So, that is in the scriptures that you have to take care of yourself. Um, it's not a little trend. Self-care has been around. Um, the next scripture we have is Mark 1 and 35. Mark chapter 1. Verse 35, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a simple scripture, right? Is it? It sounds simple. Christ went out in the morning to pray. Okay, that's that's great. But you really have to get into it because Mm. he went when? In the Early in the morning. But the rest of the world got up and started getting busy and Exactly. The horn started blowing and before it was time to get to work on anything, he made time. Mm-hmm. He made the time early in the morning. And where did he go? Solitary. And in my Bible there's a T which makes me go down and look right at the end mm-hmm. of the verse and solitary means deserted. Mm. And deserted means alone. Okay. So he went early in the morning Mm -hmm. by himself and he prayed. This is a simple scripture, but again, you know, like I said, sisters, oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I never have time. But you have five minutes to go on Facebook. You have five minutes to get up earlier. Five minutes. If you get on Facebook, you're going to be there for three days. I'm trying to be nice. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to say it as if people are not there all day. And I know that, and I don't even get on there. But when I do, I find You get sucked in there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I get Right. So, yeah. Okay. So, it's like, you know, it's like (laughs) five minutes. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm trying to be, put it light, you know, but if you have 30 minutes, if you have an hour, (laughs) (laughs) you know, the point is if you have time to, you know, do other things that you like, things that if that's what you're spending your time on, it must be important to you, then is not the most high worthy of that? Is it not worth you getting up 20 minutes earlier to... Take some quiet time before the rest of the house is awake and send up some prayers in a solitary moment. This is, this is not only, this is self-care. At the end of the day, when you're, when you're taking a moment to connect with God, <coughs> that's really you taking care of yourself spiritually. That's helping you clear your mind in the morning and helping you get yourself in the right spirit, in the right mood before you start your day. And if you got issues of any kind that prayer mm-hmm. you need it that should be clu- inclu- you should be praying for relief of whatever the mm-hmm. issue may be exactly you, know, you should be asking the most how to remove this from you or mm-hmm. if, if you don't remove it lord help me to handle it right so i mean yeah why aren't you praying anyway 
Exactly. That, that's my prayer all the time, you know. I mean, you have to do what you got to do. You got to get in there. You got you to gotta plead. You got to <clears throat> come before the Most High in the morning, just like Christ did. He made the time, went to go be alone in a place where he could focus and pray. That's self-care. All praises. All praises. So the next verse we have takes us back to the beginning. Genesis 24 and 63. Mm -hmm. 24 and 63. In case you don't know, Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. What? Yeah, it's the first <laughs> one. <laughs> Y'all better have known that, okay? <laughs> Just jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventude. And tide. I'm sorry, at the even tide. Mm -hmm. Let me start over. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. All right. So, you know, in the context, this is a time where Rebecca is coming to be with Isaac. You know, she's about to become his wife. But what was Isaac doing when they approached? He went out into the field to meditate. What do you know? Isaac was meditating. Now, again, this is something people probably think is some new thing, maybe even a new age. Oh, I have to be doing this little chance. No. Meditating does not have to be these little um, Eastern religions. That's not, <laughs> that's that's not, not what we endorse. Um, <laughs> I'm not telling you to do any okay. Buddhist chants okay. <laughs> at all. I was just checking. <laughs> That's why we're getting into the Bible. And we can see that our forefathers, again, these are things that we've practiced. We are in the field meditating in the evening. What do you know? Hmm. I just going to clear his mind. He's going to probably pray while he's out there meditating. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. When I meditate, it's just about mindfulness. It's about checking in with myself, my body, my mind, how am I feeling? Do I need to slow down my heart rate right now? Do I feel a lot of energy in my body that I just need to calm down? Is my mind racing? That's, that's what meditation is good for. It's good for you to calm yourself down, get centered, and when I do it, I tend to pray. You know, I get into a calm space, maybe put some nice relaxing music on, light some incense, and just relax. You know, get the frankincense and myrrh out and just, you know, meditate, go into some prayer. And that is really, there's a lot of studies that are done on the power of meditation. Like, it improves your productivity. It improves your overall, um, your stress levels. A lot of people, you know, if you meditate five minutes before you go to, you know, for five minutes before you go to work. Mm -hmm. Not right before, but, you know, in the morning. Mm -hmm. That can really improve your work day and improve your mood overall. So this is something our forefathers did. So don't, if you want to get into meditation, again, we're not talking about any, any weird other heathen religions or anything like that. Just mindfulness is what we're talking about. Um, let's see, meditate. Because I'm, I'm looking at the fact that the, the actual word meditate is in the scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that to be interesting. I'd be curious to know how many times it's actually used in the scripture. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know. Yeah, I'd like to know that too. That's, to look that, that up. that's a homework assignment for you guys. Mm -hmm. Look and see how many times meditate or meditation is used in the scripture. Mm -hmm. So I love it. Um, it looks like our last, is this the last? Mm -hmm. Last scripture, Psalms 127 and 2. And please note, everybody, we are using the King James Version, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Psalms 127 and <clears throat> 2. I'm curious to know, why do we say Psalms with the S? You know, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe for another day. <laughs> the book is called Psalms. But whatever psalm I'm reading doesn't have an S on it. What? No, the book <laughs> is called Psalm. But no, why S. are you? Oh, so your Bible tabs are wrong. <laughs> so 
see the Bible, <laughs> we all doing the that. Bible tab ain't King James Version. Ain't oh no telling goodness. what version those tabs are. Don't wow. be looking at my tabs. Look at my look at my book. <laughs> my scriptures. What? Man. 127. Yeah, that's, Threw me that's, off there. But I mean, <laughs> I've been curious that? to know that for a while now. I noticed it a long time ago. Psalms. That we say Psalms and in most references they put an S on it. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the Bible, there is no S on Psalm. The more you know. Revelation. Okay. With a, Man. Without an S. <laughs> you know, we love okay. to put an extra letter in so, everything. <laughs> Psalm, oops, Psalm 127 <laughs> and 2. I have three <laughs> highlighted. Hmm. 2. Verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Did I read that right? Should I read it again? I think you did. You can read it again. <laughs> is it vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep? Mm. Mm. Go ahead. Well, you I know, need some I need some clarity on this scripture. You know, this one makes me think of insomnia. You know, you're staying up late at night. You're sorrowful. A lot of times, <laughs> you know, some people when they're depressed, they can't sleep. There's there's two ends of it. Sometimes <coughs> you're oversleeping. Sometimes you can't sleep. Mm -hmm. If you have really bad anxiety, it can be hard to get to sleep or stay asleep. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of in a sorrowful state. You're really struggling. Maybe if you're just plain stressed. But when it comes to bipolar disorder, you can trigger a manic episode just by not getting enough sleep. And mm. the manic is the opposite of depressed. It's where you're in a, a heightened state and you can, it can be very chaotic. And, you know, I've, that's happened to me before. Mm -hmm. I've consistently gotten maybe three, three or four hours of sleep for like three or four nights in a row. Mm -hmm. And it sent me to an episode. Like, and I had to just wait for it to pass. It was kind of nothing I could really hmm. do. So that's for some, you know, if you have something where it's an actual mental illness that you've been diagnosed, they'll tell you these things. This is how you need to manage it. You know, make sure you get this much sleep. Don't be doing X, Y, Z. But even if you don't, you could create problems for yourself by not getting enough sleep. Okay, and so what I'm actually hearing here Sister Avia is we come full circle. Self care. Yeah. Because sleep definitely falls into that. Mm -hmm. Taking care of yourself. And you know, that's good clarity on that scripture. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. We talked about what Bain was, was in one of the classes, mm -hmm. of, of course. But you know, Bain is not a good thing. Right. It does not There's make no sense point. for you to get up, be, you're getting up early, you're staying up late. Mm -hmm. and you're depriving yourself of the rest you need mm -hmm. and you're not eating right you're feeling sorry for yourself mm -hmm. in all of this process but the most high gives his beloved sleep but how do you get to that sleep you got to pray you got mm -hmm. to fast you got to study the scriptures get i mean you know routine, you know exactly read your bible this before you go to stuff. bed that's kind of that's a good wind down routine is to get into the scriptures a little bit before you go to sleep. This is really, really good stuff. This has been very, very enlightening for me. And I pray to the most high that our sisters out there who have been listening to us today has been able to get something from this, what mm -hmm. they need individually, you know. Right. But I mean, overall, this has been a really wonderful class. This. Um, oh, crazy. Where are we now? So next... We are going to go into a few more scriptures on mental illness in the Bible. Okay. So we're going to go through some examples. Um, a couple of these are a little bit long, so we might have to summarize the chapters a bit. But the first scripture, another one of my faves, we can go to that First Samuel 16 and verse 23. Sixteen and twenty-three. First Samuel chapter sixteen, verse twenty-three. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. 
So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Hmm. That is really one of my favorite scriptures because, first off, we don't know what the issue was. We know God sent an evil spirit to Saul. Mm -hmm. And so, as we went over the definitions in the beginning, mental illness is where there is a disturbance in your uh, psychological well-being or in your behavior. So... I would venture to say that this was a disturbance that Saul was experiencing. And, you know, it's really interesting that David would play music for him and it would soothe him. The spirit would go away. And I think that's so powerful because wow. for me, music is a big thing to really help me deal with my stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if I need to, like I said, sometimes you got to cry. <laughs> you got to cry it out. Listen to something that just helps me to get there. I don't want to listen to sad music for hours and hours to make it worse. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> sometimes you need a song that you can kind of relate to just to get the feeling out. Or sometimes you need to get something that's encouraging that's going to help you be uplifted out of a mood that you're in. The, the, the power of music is, is evident in the scriptures even with helping our forefathers in these type of situations. So you've got to be mindful of what you're listening to. You've got to really understand that it's a tool. It's a great tool. Well, I'm gonna say this once again. I'm impressed by this old, oh this yeah, old old book. You, you know, there's so many things in there we don't even realize. Well, and I think it's a scripture to say. There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. But I mean, there's sometimes when you read it and you're still amazed, mm -hmm. even though you know, you know, it's like wow, right? Really? This is, is one of those for me. Was, yes. I'm Every like, time Whoa. I read it, it's like man. Um, the next one is First Kings 19, mm -hmm. 1 through 8. Chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came upon the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mountain, the mount of God. Wow, you know, this one, this is a really, really cool scripture to me. Um, my husband and I were doing a study together, and he brought this one out to me, and I was like, you know, I feel like I thought I read this whole book, but <laughs> this one was like, it just hit me differently when we were studying it. So, you know, a lot is going on. Prophets are being killed. Elijah's getting into a depressed state. As we just read, he's, he's wanting to die. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a pretty dire situation to be in. And he was sleeping a lot. Again, that's one of the symptoms of depression. Mm -hmm. Some people are just, you're constantly sleeping. You got that fatigue. And it's just so interesting because today we would call this like a depression nap. Like that's a thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's what people call it when you're doing so much sleeping when you're in that mode. Mm -hmm. I was like, Elijah was taking a depression nap? <laughs> like, wow. Did I really just read this correctly? Like it just really goes to show that these things are not new. These are things that our forefathers have been dealing with. 
he wasn't eating and and angel had to come to him and say wake up remember you got you need eat. to nourish yourself you he was strength. not doing you got that. a long way to go you got to eat something exactly so wow. again he was reminding him to do what self-care self-care that Ooh. that scripture blows me away like that's crazy Ooh. to me that's in there wow girl i'm learning some stuff today i'm learning some stuff <laughs> and i hope everybody else is learning some stuff mm -hmm. today too well, okay, our next one, we're going to go into the Apocrypha. We're going to go to Tobit. Come here, Tobit. There you go. Um, Tobit, chapter 3, verses 8 through 17 to start off with. So this one is, this is a little bit long. So just to give some context, we are talking about uh, the foremother, Sarah, mm -hmm. the daughter of Raguel. Mm -hmm. So that's who we're talking about right now. We can start at verse 8. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Osmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed, before they had lain with her. Dost thou not know, said they, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Thou hast had already seven husbands, neither wast thou named after any of them. Wherefore dost thou beat us for them? If they be dead, go thy ways after them. Let us never see of thee either son or daughter. So this is um, her father's maids are talking to Sarah. And Sarah's, all of seven of her husbands, she kept trying to get married, and an evil spirit was killing them on their wedding night. Before they even lay together, every single one of these men was I killed. I can't imagine. <laughs> Seven times? I'm sorry. I would be wiped out after that happened once. <laughs> like, uh, well, in today's time, would she be considered the black widow? Yeah. The black widow? Her, ma the, her father's maids are like, look, you cursed. <laughs> you don't see what you're oh, doing to all these guys? See. Like, that is, that's, I don't know how, she, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> okay. We're at verse 10. Mm-hmm. When she heard these things, she was very sorrowful, so, so that she thought to have strangled herself. Oh, my. So she's wanting to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. You read that correctly in the scriptures. And she said, I am the only daughter of my father, and if I do this, it shall be a reproach unto him, and I shall bring his old age with sorrow unto the grave. Then she prayed toward the window. No, she prayed. Mm -hmm. And said, Blessed art thou, O Lord my God, and thine holy and glorious name is blessed and honorable forever. Let all thy works praise thee forever. And now, O Lord, I set mine eyes and my face toward thee. I say, Take me out of the earth, that I may hear no more for the reproach, no more the reproach. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man, and that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father, in the land of my captivity. I am the only daughter of my father. Neither hath he any child to be his heir, neither any near kinsman, nor any son of his alive, to whom I may keep myself for a wife. My seven husbands are already dead, and why should I live? But if it please not thee that I should die, command some regard to be laid, had of me and pity taken of me that I hear no more reproach. So at this point, Sarah is suicidal. She's praying to God, please just take me out. Like, I can't handle this. All seven of her husbands have died, and she's ready to just, to just be dead too. This, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the prayers of them both were heard before the majesty of the great God. And Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is, to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes and to give Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, for a wife to Tobias, the son of Tobit. And to bind Asmodeus, the evil spirit. Because she belonged to Tobias, Tobias by right of inheritance. 
The self same time came Tobit home and entered into his house, house, and Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, came down from her upper chamber. So it looks like we might be getting a little hope here. The angel Raphael is sent now to come and fix the situation. Mm -hmm. So the evil spirit that was killing all of her husbands is now bound. And now she's getting a new husband. So we'll see how this goes. Well, I'm curious. Seven husbands? Seven. I'm like, did they not know about the previous husbands? Did the, 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 the last three not know about I the wonder. previous I wonder how that went. <laughs> like, who keep marrying? Because the maze was going in on her. Like, you, something wrong with wow. you. Wow. Okay, so we're going to jump over to chapter eight. Chapter eight. And we're going to read verses um, 6 through 8 and then 19 to finish it off. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8, verse 6. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. And now, O Lord... I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly, therefore mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. And she said with him, Amen. Was it through eight? Oh, you can read nine too, sorry. Okay. So they slept both that night, and Raguel arose and went. Oh, and we can stop there. Okay. And, he, and she said with him, Amen. And then 19, you said. And he kept the wedding feast 14 days. So basically what you're trying to tell me is he didn't die. <laughs> he did not die. And, you know, when I had uh, went over this story the other day, I was like, oh, my gosh. It's been a minute since I really went through it because this scripture, thou mayest Adam and gave him Eve, you know, this is a scripture a lot of us use when someone gets married. It's like mm -hmm. the go-to. It's such a beautiful scripture. But then you really go back and realize, oh, snap, the woman in the scripture that's being referenced was this black widow type woman mm -hmm. who went the through all of that trauma. The woman who uh, appeared to have killed seven men. Yeah, <laughs> she was, she was I mean, going through it. Yeah, on the surface, I would think, oh, my gosh, she's killing all of her husbands. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out, you know, she was wanting to die. She was ready to give up. Wow. And I'll be honest, like, I don't think I could handle what she handled. Seven different Seven? husbands? That's a lot. She had faith. And she did. Took, took last that long before she got to the point where she was like, just, just kill me, Lord. I can't do it. Take me now. <laughs> but it's so amazing that even when she was in that state, she still had a mind to pray. And she, she asked praises. the Most High, if you don't take me out, just have mercy on me. So she still had her faith even going through all of that. And look what happened. She got her happy ending. I was going to say, he, he had mercy on her and gave her a husband that lived to see mm -hmm. the wedding chamber and 14, 14 days, days afterwards. That's a two-week long party. If he died on the fifth, 15th day, <laughs> that was a, a success. I mean, you know. <laughs> like, that's better than the <laughs> Exactly. But, but that lets us know that prayer works. Mm-hmm. And keeping the faith. Like, if she can go through that. You know, that has to be motivation for us. Whatever we're going through, we can make it. You just have to keep a little bit of faith. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. One day at a time. Mm -hmm. Every morning I wake up, I'm like, oh, my gosh, thank you, Lord, for giving me another opportunity to get it right. Mm -hmm. And I don't always get it right. Right. Just because I prayed that that morning. But it makes a wonderful start to my day. I get up thinking, oh, I'm going to get this right. But then, I mean, you know, I might get to work and somebody say something stupid to me and that just messes up the whole mm. thing. But repetition, you got to right. keep doing the same thing keep over trying. and over and over again, not giving up even when you don't get the result as soon as you think you ought to. Exactly. So, yes. That is a good oh my point. gosh, this is good stuff, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, our next uh, scripture comes from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. You said it right. Oh, did I? Girl, <laughs> I've heard I some people have problems Deuteronomy. With, <laughs> with pronouncing this word, this uh, book of the Bible. Deuteronomy 28 and 28. 
So let's see what it says. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of the heart. Well, there it is. You know, mental illness is, we don't want to call ourselves crazy, but in the context of the scripture and how the Most High refers to certain conditions, we're smitten with madness. It's a psychological and behavioral disturbance. That's the definition, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just letting you know this is a part of the curses. We basically brought this on ourselves. All of these curses we read in Deuteronomy is because of our disobedience. So, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> we, we have to deal with these type of things. So it's not for us to just lay down and, and woe is me, you know, I have all these different conditions. I, I will be the first to tell you, I deal with multiple things, and I don't try to use that as an excuse. I don't like to let whatever I'm dealing with be something that keeps me from doing what the Most High has called me to do. Because, you know, the scripture says, and I can't quote it, I don't, I don't remember where it is, but it says, strive for the truth unto death, and the Most High will fight for you. So that's something I always think of because, I mean, I go through so many episodes, I deal with so much, and my mindset is, okay, if I want to be healed, if I want to get the kingdom, and I want the Most High to see that I'm sincerely trying and working towards that, I can't be lazy about it. I can't, I can't take what he's giving me and just lay down and be like, oh, I can't take this, it's too much. Because he won't give us more than we could bear, right? I'm struck with madness. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm smitten. <laughs> like, I may be smitten with madness, but I'm still going to try to get this kingdom. Like, All you got to do what you got to do. So All prices. Because I don't think there's a scripture in here that says because you may have or you're dealing with these curses that we stop serving him. Right. We're supposed Is to. Is there a scripture that says that? <laughs> I, I've never the, read it. <laughs> well, and I mean, you know, that's a, a, a huge one for me. We all have issues, mm -hmm. whether they're um, legitimate or not. I'll put it that way, because some <laughs> of us create our own issues you that know it's true but we all have issues whether your issue is real or not I, I have respect mm -hmm. for the issue you may have right but I have my issues but I'm still striving for the kingdom mm -hmm. so I have a problem with you having issues and it halts you from doing the work of the most high right that's huge for me so basically what you just told me is, yeah, we have problems, and they're mm -hmm. serious, and they can be debilitating mm -hmm. at times. But in order to get through them, not necessarily get rid of them, but mm -hmm. to handle them and deal with them, we got to stay in the Word and continue to work and strive for the kingdom. Exactly. All praise. And another point I want to make is... You know, if, if you are dealing with something that is really debilitating, and I'll use myself again, for example, I get, I have chronic migraines that can be very debilitating. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some times where I've had to be like, I can't tune into this, this meeting because mm -hmm. it's a blinding, like, oh, severe, yeah. I'm going to throw up type migraine. Mm -hmm. And so that's up to me to get the meeting notes after. If somebody is giving me a task mm -hmm. to do in the church, okay, if I'm, in a, if I'm in a mode where I'm like, ooh, I feel like this depression is coming on, I'm fighting it, I'm fighting it and doing what I can to manage it and to improve it, but it's still, it's really difficult, what do I need to do? I need to communicate. If you are given a task in the church and someone is expecting things out of you, you don't just let things go by, let them go past the due date and just not do your responsibilities. You need to say, hey, I may need a little extra time. Can you extend this project due date for me? Or, you know, if you feel yourself getting into a mode where things are getting really difficult for you to do. Because sometimes, you know, I'm, I've been using depression a lot because I know that's a relatable example. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you get really, really depressed, it can be hard to get up, to cook for yourself, to, to get out of bed, 
to cook for yourself, to shower. Get to moving. To do anything. Get to moving. So if you're in that mode and you have responsibilities in the church, you need to do what you got to do. Don't leave people hanging. You say, hey, just want to let you know I might need a little extra help with this mm -hmm. or I cannot commit to all these extra tasks right now because mm -hmm. I don't want to let anybody down. I need to take care of myself so I can get to that point. Mm -hmm. I hope sisters hear me when I say that. Well, and what I just heard is, okay, I may not be 100%, 100% of the time, mm -hmm. but I'm still accountable. Exactly. For whatever I have going on in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm still accountable for my responsibility. Right. I may not be 100. I may not be able to get the task done as quickly as I got it done last week mm -hmm. because today is a different day. But the task still needs to get done. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, man, I go way back. This makes me think of, oh, my gosh, old, old school gospel mm -hmm. singer. I think his name was Carlton Pearson. Carlton Pearson, something like that. But he did this gospel song, and you know how they be talking and hollering and carrying on. Mm -hmm. One of the things he said, and it stuck with me, obviously, all the way up until today. Mm -hmm. You can't be depressed and praise God at the same time. Mm -hmm. So not to say you can't be depressed, mm -hmm. but if in the midst of your depression you're giving God the praise, What's at the forefront? Mm -hmm. Not your depression. Right. The praising of God. You're making that the priority. Exactly. And it removes that feeling mm -hmm. or that particular ailment at that moment. It right. may not go away forever, mm -hmm. but in your praise, your focus is on him mm -hmm. and not on you. The problem, yeah. So That's a really good point. I love that. Yeah, I mean, that has stuck with me over the years. I think it's Carlton Pearson, and I can hear the song kind of in my head now. Mm -hmm. Y'all want me to sing it? No, nah, we good. <laughs> okay, that was a good answer, Bia, because... No, no, ma'am. I may be a lot of things, but I'm not a singer. And I've had people ask me about my voice. You have a voice like you can sing. Uh, no, mm -hmm. I cannot. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So we are just going to go into a couple more things. Just some quick tips and ideas for how to manage your mental health. So by now, I hope that, you know, going through the pillars of uh, self-care, I hope that you guys have already gotten a lot out of that and understanding that there's levels to it. So now we're going to go into how to manage your mental health. These are some uh, tips that I personally have used that I think are really good. So, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So the first one is using a mood tracker. This is something that you can, um, you can find like printouts, maybe like on Pinterest, on Etsy, where it's basically a little chart. And you have different, you got your different moods. You got the date on there. Uh, maybe you do this for like a week or for the whole month. And you can track your mood on there. You can track your habit. Uh, you know, like maybe exercising or how much sleep you're getting, things like that. Basically all the things that, you know, we've gone over within the self-care pillars. Just to be able to see if there's a pattern, if, you know, certain mm -hmm. activities affect your mood a certain way or a lack of sleep might be affecting you. You know, it's a good thing to just kind of get a layout of how am I feeling? Not just day to day because it all changes. So it's good to use something that's kind of got the month laid out for you, that you can review it. And that's especially um, beneficial if you have a mood disorder, just putting that out there. I would say, a, 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 what do you call it, a mood journal. Yeah, a mood journal, those are good too, yeah. yeah. Journaling period is a really, I don't know why I don't have that up here, but yeah. Mm -hmm. you gotta write everything out and just mm -hmm. get it off your chest. That's and sometimes good it's good to see mm -hmm. in black and white what's going on, what's happening. That should be kind very of talking helpful. it out yeah. on paper. Another one is sticking to a routine. Obviously, we've talked about the importance of that, making sure that you have some consistency so that, you know, it keeps your mind on track. It keeps everything on track. So you're not causing unnecessary stress on yourself by not having any consistency in your schedule. You don't 
You don't want to have chaos. That's not good for your mental health. Mm -hmm. Another one is joining a support group. This is one that I personally am in a lot of support groups, like on Facebook. Facebook's probably the best place for it mm -hmm. online. Also, you know, going to support groups in person. Um, you can look through, you can you can talk to the second one, I'll speak on that together, is speaking to a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's your therapist, you got a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Um, if you don't know, the difference is a psychologist cannot prescribe medication, a mm -hmm. psychiatrist can. So, you know, you got I counselors. I want a psychiatrist. Please. <laughs> 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 but, um, Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's lots of different types of mental health professionals. <coughs> and, me. okay, some of those. Um, I got a little tickle in my tickle. throat. <laughs> a little tickle. <laughs> well, you know, Austin is known for tickle, tickle well, allergies. Tickle throats. Yeah. Right. You never know when it's going to hit mm -hmm. either. Nowhere. But, um, you know, you can talk to a lot of different mental health professionals. And some of them will recommend programs that they may have for support groups that you can go to, you know, on a regular schedule. So another one would be engaging in some joyful movement, like we talked about earlier, exercise, exercise that you enjoy, just getting those endorphins going. Get in your living room and dance. Mm -hmm. That's a good one, too. I like oh doing gosh, that. Oh, gosh, yeah, just shake it up, shake it mm -hmm. up. Another one is writing down your triggers and coping skills. This is one that I have done in conjunction with using a mood tracker. So let's say I got anxiety, right? <laughs> and that, I do. <laughs> For me, when I go grocery shopping, it's a thing. I have to make sure that I have my list already done. You know, we're in Texas, so we got a HEB. I love this store because the app organizes your list based off of the aisle. So you go in order. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm like a snake moving to the store. Yeah. Don't I don't have to look for anything. And get because to me a grocery store can be like it gives me sensory overload. It I can get real be overwhelming, anxious, especially if it's busy. Ugh. Which is it's all, just the time. all the time. All the time. It's it's too I much going know. on in yeah. there for a person who has anxiety. So you know, knowing how to how to go about that, I gotta go grocery shopping. Sometimes if I have the money, I'll do like the curbside pickup or I'll do grocery mm -hmm. delivery to avoid going in there altogether. But if I got to go in, I have a game plan because I know my triggers. I know what's going to throw me off and I know how to cope with it. So well, and this is a good opportunity to use your coping skills, mm -hmm. you know. I know I have to go in here, so let me have a plan of action mm -hmm. on how I'm going to deal with that. Exactly. So yeah, instead of, you know, Avoiding it all together and, you know, going in the refrigerator and there's only ketchup packets. You take ketchup today. <laughs> you use that as an opportunity to use those coping skills. And that know? helps you grow. If you're, if exactly. you're making yourself, you know, not don't put yourself in a situation where it's overwhelming, but in <clears throat> managing your mental health, sometimes you got to put yourself in situations where it's a little uncomfortable, but you're growing to get over that thing or to, you know, just improve it, how you deal with it, basically. Mm -hmm. So writing down your triggers and coping skills is very important. And last would be to take your medication or supplements. Now this is one, I want to be clear on my stance on it because I know that people all, everyone has their <coughs> opinions on this thing. Me. And I, whenever I've counseled sisters dealing with mental illness and things, a lot of times the worry comes up that, oh, I don't want to get on ESOP medication. I don't want to have to take any pills. Now, personally, I do not, and that's a big thing dealing with bipolar disorder and you know anxiety and things. Mm -hmm. Most people that do have bipolar are on multiple pills, and you know I I prefer to take supplements and that works for me. But if you absolutely have to take medication, or if you just choose to do that instead of, everyone's not going to do the holistic <coughs> route is what I'm saying. There should be no <coughs> shaming anybody for how they're dealing with right, their stuff. Right, exactly. Because if the medication, there, I know some people where they've tried to deal with their stuff the holistic route, mm -hmm. and it didn't work. It didn't mm -hmm. do anything for them. But the medication the doctor gave them, it, worked. it helps them every single day to function. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that out there that we should not be shaming anybody. If you feel like, oh, sis, you don't need to do that. Just look up this herb. and do, you're, If you're not... Their doctor, it doesn't matter if you're 
oh, I'm a licensed herbalist or whatever. Hmm. If you're not that person's specific doctor, you should not be giving them medical advice on how to handle these things because a lot of things are, are neurological conditions. They are, what's it called? Uh, it's like a hormonal imbalance in someone's mm-hmm. mind. You, you haven't studied this for this specific person, so just be mindful if you want to give advice. Sometimes just don't <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, on this subject. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you have to let people do what's best for them. It's a case by case scenario, mm-hmm. and what that that made me think of a uh, scripture in the apocrypha about medication because you know mm-hmm. some people say, "Oh no, I'm not taking like you say Esau's medicine," yeah. but the scriptures tell us that the Most High gave physicians the talent. Mm-hmm. He said, "Honor the physician." Honor the physician. Um, if you go to uh, Ecclesiasticus. Uh, Sirach in the Apocrypha chapter 38. It talks about honoring the physician and his medicine. Mm -hmm. So I want to just say that you know if medicine is prescribed and that works for you it's okay. Yeah. I mean everybody don't necessarily need medicine just like you said Mm -hmm. but for some yeah you might need that medication and the Most High tells you to honor that physician Mm -hmm. who He's given the knowledge to know what to do. And now every exactly. physician ain't going to be the right physician either. Right. That could be a whole other class as well. You got to, you know, work it out for yourself. And sometimes it's trial and error with certain exactly. medications you're given. You it gotta, can be trial and error with the physician. Know, yeah, with the doctor, <laughs> with what the exactly. medications are, you know. Exactly. And that's just part of the, the process is figuring out what works for you. So moving on. We are going to talk about how to support others. So if you know somebody who has a mental illness, there are a lot of ways that you can be helpful to them. You just have to learn how to do it. A lot of times people don't really, they're not educated on these type of things. So they're like, ah, I don't really know what to do. You know, I feel worried because I don't know exactly how to help her or I don't know how to help this person. So we're going to give you guys some tips. You know, and a lot of times if it's not something you suffer with or something mm-hmm. you're aware of, you have a tendency to take it lightly. Oh, girl, ain't yeah. nothing wrong with you. That's true. Take a chill pill. You alright, you know. Yeah. Go have a drink. Mm-hmm. Chill out. I mean, you know. That happens a lot and, you know, to me I, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a professional in this field. It's not my career or anything. But I would consider myself a mental health advocate because I I'm very passionate about this subject and I do a lot of research. Like I said, I have my own conditions, but, you know, for the sake of learning how to help my brethren, I really am in, I'm just interested in in learning about different conditions. What is someone with OCD? What's their life like? How, what, what can help them? You know, different things that I may not deal with, but it's just good to learn a little bit about everything because we all deal with so much. Our people are some of the people with the highest rates of mental illness, if you look into statistics. So it's just good to do your research. And that is the first tip on how to support others, is researching their condition. Understand what they're dealing with. You know, this is something that my husband and I did when we were proving. Once I, I actually got diagnosis in the middle of us proving. Like we were proving for a year at that point, and I was like, oh snap. I hope he still wants to be I was going to say and he didn't run. I was like, ooh. <laughs> All places. That's you a know, beautiful story. It is a beautiful story because he actually, you know, encouraged me to figure things out and get some help and to, he, he did his own research to understand, okay, what is she dealing with? How am I going to be able to help? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's her, her struggle looking like? And that's really important. If you, if someone tells you, hey, I'm dealing with this. You know, it's good to do that research because it shows that you care. You know, what I'm really, 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 really loving about all of this is how we just keep coming back to all the scriptures in the Bible because now Mm -hmm. you just touched up on what? Proving a friend Mm -hmm. and how important that is and how that could be helpful to the process. Exactly. That is proving a friend. Wow. It's very important. I'm loving these scriptures. Mm Mm-hmm. So the next thing that you can do is encourage them to stick to their treatment plan. So, you know, 
whatever condition you might be dealing with, you have to put together a treatment plan. You know, whether that's with yourself and like somebody supporting you, whether that's with a therapist, you know, the treatment plan is to figure out what are the steps that you need to take to maintain some balance in your life, to keep your mental health at a good state. So if you have a friend that you know is dealing with something, it's good to kind of, you know, <coughs> check in with them. Not always like nagging, ooh, you don't seem like you took your medication today. Or, you know, don't make comments like that, but be like, hey, how you, how's everything going? You know, you, have you been working out or you want to go do this thing together mm -hmm. that you know is something that's in their treatment plan that's supposed to help them? Mindfulness. Yeah, just be mindful of that thing and kind of consider that this person has a whole process for their life right now. And it's good for you to kind of encourage them to, to keep up with that process. The third thing that you can do, and this one is a little hard for me, being the one, the recipient, is to provide practical help and ask what they need or want. Mm -hmm. Now, Sister Arielle is very good at this. She is. She's really good at this. She's I like, okay, her. what exactly can I do? Is there something I can bring you? Is it... She pops up at my house just randomly. She really is good at that. I and it's like yes. freaking angel. Me, <laughs> me, not so much. <laughs> but she really is good for that. And I mm -hmm. watch her and I try to really learn from her. I yeah. really do. Because she is, like we say, that that solvent, you know, mm -hmm. that 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 uh She's the glue. Yeah, that <laughs> stuff you need together. on the little the little uh, salve you need on the little boo boo mm -hmm. to make it feel better. That's she's got that's, the soothing oh kind my of gosh. personality and role. Yeah, but it's that that's such an important thing is, you know, being able to ask them, okay, what exactly can I help you with? What what specific mm -hmm. support do you need? Like I said, for me it can be difficult because sometimes it's hard to ask for help. And I wrote about this in the last uh, self care Sunday. Is you got to get over it. At the end of the day, if you need help can't be ashamed sometimes it's your pride sometimes mm -hmm. you don't want to feel like a burden and it's just like oh i need this but i want to ask i don't want to put anybody out but and what's the worst that could happen they say no they say no they can't and if they say no guess what mm -hmm. okay you and you wasn't him anyway and nine times out of ten if someone says no it's not really like a malicious no it's like i wish i could help but i can't i mm -hmm. know yeah. because if that's the type of people we have around you, you should have a good circle. Right. So, you know, that's the worst that can happen. But that's something I work on. It's being like, all right, mm -hmm. I have to be honest. I need somebody to help me clean up today. <laughs> like, I need mm -hmm. somebody to, you know, maybe can you get a couple groceries for me? You just have to communicate with each other. And the next one is being a good listener. I'm really happy. I'm big on this one. You now that's where I step in. I'm generally yes, you a good are the best I listener. I generally right am now. a good listener. You really are. You don't always need to give advice. Just be there for them. Yes. Let me repeat that. Yes. And excuse me if I go on a mini rant. <laughs> <laughs> you don't always need to give advice. Just be there for them. Now I can tell you from the perspective of someone with mental illness. Just the sheer amount of advice that comes at you <laughs> is, is ridiculous. People think they have the cure for everything. Because a lot of times the advice that's being given is worthless anyway. It is. And people will come and tell you, oh, well, have you tried working out regularly three times a day? Do you make sure you eat this many omega-3s every day? <laughs> it's like, dude, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I know I've been dealing with this for a long time. You know... It's not to say that all advice is unwelcome. It's not to say that you will never, ever have a good piece of information to give somebody. Be mindful. But ultimately, <laughs> it, it comes down to partly your relationship with this person. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, just understanding, do they need me to give advice right now or should I just listen? Majority of the time, you just need somebody to listen. Because I've heard it all. Like, everyone... As soon as someone hears, oh, you got anxiety, well, I do this and this and that, or I heard, I read, and they give you, like, a, a laundry list of cures that I've tried so many of them. Some of them are in my toolbox that I already do. It's not like I need to hear it <laughs> 5,000 times from 5,000 people. Just, I just need you to listen. Sometimes I need to get something off my chest, or I just need to know that 
somebody's there for me. And <clears throat> in proving a friend and you have the right people around you, that really, really good friend that you've been proving for a while will know the difference. Mm -hmm. I'll know when you call up and I can hear in your voice that this is a phone call that she just want to rant and rave and I'm going to sit here and listen and let her do it. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be that phone call where you're, you hear the asking for help mm -hmm. in the voice. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you're that friend, you know the difference. And I'm going to take it another step. That is so true. You need to prove somebody and, or, and, and you know, develop that type of relationship. But even on the other end, just over communicate with people. Just ask. I've had I've had conversations with my mom like this because she's a person that I call her Mrs. Fix It because <laughs> she mm -hmm. loves to. She Fix it's it. it's such a great quality. But sometimes I've told her I'm like I don't want advice right now. Just just please just listen. And so sometimes she'll say, Do you want some advice? Or you know she'll ask mm -hmm. before she gives it. And I think that's such a sweet thing to do because mm -hmm. you know. Even though it's well intentioned, unsolicited advice can feel like an attack at times. Mm -hmm. It's just like I can I, understand like, you know, and see that can be overwhelming. So even though I've been in the position of giving the unwanted or unneeded mm -hmm. advice, I can definitely and understand I think we all have. may feel like it's an attack, mm -hmm. and that's not what I need right now. Right. It, it, it it's not being helpful right now. Exactly. It's actually making things worse right now. Shut exactly. Up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where, you know, the communication comes in. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next one is don't be judgmental or downplay their struggle. So one thing I don't like is comparing people's struggles or making it seem like, oh, you're okay, or it's just this, or if someone's telling you something is serious, and they're explaining to you how they're struggling, it's not helpful to just say, oh, well, you know, like the, the advice, oh, just do this, just this, or, oh, you'll be okay, or, you know, saying statements that are kind of like quick, write you off type statements. Mm -hmm. Oh, just cheer up. If I could, I would. Like, if it was that easy, don't you think I would be cheered up by now? Well, and it's, it, just, it, it's down playing your your issue, your yeah. problem. It's downplaying the disease itself. It's like I have a hormonal imbalance within my brain chemistry, and mm -hmm. you're telling somebody, oh, just cheer up. It's not like I'm choosing to have this issue. I'm working to get through it and fight it, but it's not an easy fix. You can't put a Band-Aid on it with those type of statements. But would you say that sometimes those kind of statements, those kind of reactions come out of a lack of knowledge? Absolutely. A lot of times, and I'm guilty of making off remarks that I didn't necessarily mean any harm. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know any better. Right, we all do that. So yes, I mean, I, I mean, it's it, it it's tough and that's why you know it's just it's important to if you're trying to learn how to love your neighbor it's just important to, to do that research you know mm -hmm. okay yes because like i say i've been guilty of making off remarks that mm -hmm. weren't uh favorable you mm -hmm. know but it wasn't with intentional malice right it wasn't with intentional harm mm -hmm. I just didn't know any better. And I can honestly say that <clears throat> over the past couple of months with you posting um, your self-care sun Sunday mm -hmm. and, you know, reading those and just proving you as a friend because we're in a proving process as well, mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot. That's great. That's All really praises great to, to the most high. And I am starting to be way more mindful of the things that just – voluntarily <laughs> roll out of my mouth. <laughs> right. That's really good. That, that makes me happy to hear that. I, I am. I am starting to be more mindful and thinking about what I say before I say it. And I think a lot of us are guilty mm -hmm. of, you know, saying something before we even think about it. Yeah. And words are one of the hardest things to take back. 
mm-hmm. if you can take them back at all because exactly. once they're out there it's out there the damage the is damage done, is done. Mm-hmm. so i mean i really appreciate you taking out the time to put this class together to share with us because it, it i'm learning a lot oh praises yes yeah it's a it's a lot to to learn for sure you know it's just we got to learn to love each other better that's the whole point Love thy neighbor as thyself. And you know, that's a big one because Mm -hmm. if I treat you like I treat me, girl, I'm going to be treating you like royalty. Exactly. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, (laughs) praise All right. So the last one is to celebrate their wins, big and small. So... You know, if I go grocery shopping and my anxiety is bad that day and I make it out with have, without having an episode in the grocery aisle, um, that's a big win. I need you to clap, please. <laughs> like, you know, if I, if I am super depressed and I make it out of the house to go spend time with somebody, that's a big win. If I am super depressed and I get up long enough to make some eggs real quick and get back in bed, it might be a small win, but it's... Really, all of the wins are big wins when you're when you're dealing with mental illness, mm-hmm. and those need to be celebrated. It's really, it's it's so difficult when you are in a position where it's difficult to take care of yourself, and you're doing everything that you can. And sometimes all you can do is is make those baby steps. But just like when a kid is just learning to walk, those are baby steps, and mm-hmm. parents are like, "Yeah, look at him, he's doing." So much so that they scare the baby and the baby. Yeah, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm too excited. <laughs> yeah, we get so worked up about them walking, we interrupt the process. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know, kind of kind of need some similar energy, you know. It's just to be, we see, I see that you're really trying really hard, and I'm proud of you for continuing to do your best to take care of yourself, even in this hard time. Like, mm-hmm. that, that right there is like, ugh. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a crybaby. I burst into tears, and they'll be like happy, appreciative tears. Oh, I will cry. cry right now. I'm <laughs> Not right now, but if you tell me okay. that, like when I'm okay. down, I'll be like, okay, okay. good. She loves me. Yes, so. I do love you. I love you too. And I'm gonna check on you more often. Thank you. Yes, That's all we need, you know. Just, yeah, just celebrate those big wins and those. And I promise wins. I won't <laughs> give unwarranted <laughs> advice. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> But look, if I think you need it, <laughs> yeah. If you think I'm I need gonna it, give it hey. to you. <laughs> I'm gonna give like it. Like we you. said, that accountability <laughs> is important. So, in conclusion, um, I do want to provide some resources for you guys because you know everybody needs help, and there's a lot of different ways that you can get that help. There are, um, if you can click on the slide, we've got some links to some blogs. I have my personal blog. It's called Love Thine Own Soul. All phrases. So that is first on the list. You know, this is obviously um, geared towards sisters. This is for women dealing with their mental health. So there's a lot of um, articles on there. If you are a writer, or even if you're not a writer, and you have a story that you want to share related to mental health or mental illness, please feel free to contact me so that maybe we can do like a guest article. Have you write something and post it up there? Just so we clear also, if you want to be anonymous, that's also an option. So, you know, you got to build up that blog a little more. Because I need sisters to, to get on that thing. All praises. Support, support, support. Yes, please. Ain't nothing like supporting your own people. And the next one is The Mighty. This is, a, this is really my favorite uh, mental health blog. They have pages for different conditions, not just mental but physical. So if you got like chronic illness or anything like that, um, autism, they have pages on there where you can read different articles. Um, they've got all the mental health, all the mental disorders that you could think of. They have pages for those. Um, they also have the app, the Mighty app, where it's kind of like a social media setup as well, where you can interact with people that deal with the same things and they can relate. Another one is the um, Healthy Place. That's another one. It's a really good resource for just a lot of information on different conditions. You can do a lot of research there. Also, I don't know if y'all like to listen to podcasts. I am a big fan of those. They are, you know, another convenient way to get some knowledge in. Mm-hmm. Just listening to it while you're doing your chores or you're working on something. There is one called Therapy for Black Girls. So this is 
obviously geared towards our people. And it's a really cool, like, uh, relatable podcast. They bring a li- some different guests on there, but the main lady, I can't remember her name, but she does a lot of really good content up there about mental health. Now we have some therapy resources. Uh, this first one is something that I was recommended by a lady uh, a while ago it's called Open Path Collective. This one is for, it's for um, people that need some help financially with their therapy. So there is a $60 membership fee, one-time fee. And then from there, the sessions are from $30 to, I believe, 80 or 90 which is, if you've ever looked into getting therapy, one session can be a hundred plus dollars, so that's a really good deal if you, mm-hmm. you know, you may not be able to, you know, have insurance. Sometimes therapy is just not accessible for people. It's, oh, well, it's really difficult. This. So, yes, ma'am. this website, you know, you don't have to schedule things two weeks, four weeks, you know, of the month. You can schedule it when you need to. Um, they also have video chat available as well as phone calls. So, if you don't want to go in person, you can do that way. And there's also another resource called BetterHelp. This is a, um, it's a mobile app as well where you can get access to people, different uh, mental health professionals, therapists, counselors. Um, different from the Open Path Collective, they cannot give you a diagnosis on this app, but they're just there to counsel you. They can, uh, you can access them through like texting. A lot of them share their hours, but most of it is pretty much like Almost 24 hours you can reach out to these people. And last but not least, there is a crisis hotline link from Healthy Place, the website. This link has every single link you can imagine for if you need a suicide hotline, if you need, you know, eating disorder hotline, if you need anything for those like emergency numbers, you can call them. It has the list for every state um, in the United States. I'm not sure if it has like UK or anything, but. You know, that's something to check into. You know, again, there's no shame in using these resources. I have personally used mental health hotlines. You need someone to talk to that's a professional Mm -hmm. quickly. They'll respond to you. Um, If you absolutely don't know where to start to get help, these hotlines are a good place because you can call them. Some some you can text. I've done that because, like I said, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. you get anxious. It's kind of a scary thing, but it's you're really brave for reaching out for help. Well, and, and you know, things. sometimes it's good. I'm sorry, I didn't mean uh-huh. to cut you off. Okay. But sometimes it's good to talk to someone, reach out to someone who is not connected to you. Yeah. Someone who does not have a personal interest. Yeah. And that's really easier. what therapy is about. Mm-hmm. Somebody who doesn't have uh, influence one way or the other. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, a like lot of partial. times we, especially in our community, the black community, we shun professional mental health help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if we should do that. I mean, you know, sometimes it goes back to Sirach 38 and that physician because the mental mm-hmm. health doctor is a physician as well. Yeah. And sometimes it's good to be able to go and sit down and have a conversation about what's going on with somebody who doesn't play any type of role in your life. Exactly. Don't know you from Adam, per se. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's a good part of it because you can just talk to someone who knows what they're talking about, knows exactly how they can help mm-hmm. you. And they're but trying to do that. You don't have to worry about them like, talking about you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or, you know. You yeah, don't know by, me, by I'm just coming in I here this home, week. Sister Ariel go already know my business. <laughs> right, you don't have to worry about that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and also on that point of our people not being really, being kind of scared to do this or being not being encouraged to seek out therapy. If I'm not mistaken, I haven't looked at statistics for it's like in the past year, but I believe Native Americans have the highest suicide rate in there. So that tells you our people are really, really going through these things. Like, we well, need people to talk to. That's and we don't really talk about, like, Gad and Ruben like that. But uh, Yeah, because now I'm sitting here thinking, what? Yeah. They have some of the highest statistics of those type of issues amongst our people as a whole. In America. And, and, I mean, you know, of course, we, we're running out of time. But I, I would be curious to know what the 
majority majority of the reasons are what is their reason behind mm -hmm. taking their own lives because you know at the end of the day uh the nation of israel is some of your strongest people as mm -hmm. well strong strong-minded even though we may have mental illnesses we're right. still some some of the strongest strong-minded people I mean, yet you know, some it goes the all highest. the way back into these Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we 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 deal with a lot before we break 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 right. down. I mean, you know, and yet we're some of the highest rates of, that's of mental illness. So, so that, it's really, you know, that's something for you sisters to check out and do some mm -hmm. research on too. Especially if you get, yep, go find out why. Something Be to consider and just realize that, like we said, the the whole point of of this presentation is to talk about taking care of yourself but like we've gone through a lot learning how to take care of others and, and show them the importance of self-care in their own lives and learning how to deal with your brothers and sisters that have mental illness because this is something that plagues so many of our people and we just we can't continue to be uneducated about it anymore so love thy neighbor as thyself nope. treat I want to treat you like I want you to treat me. Mm -hmm. I like that. Treat you like I want to be treated. Something. something treat, you know, yeah, yeah, treat you, you know like you want to be treated. <laughs> you know, you know the same. But yes, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. It's the scripture. Exactly. It's the scripture. I can come up with all of the other stuff that people came up with, but the bottom line is love thy neighbor as thyself. If mm -hmm. I love you like I love me, Man, can you imagine what this world would be like? We wouldn't, we wouldn't have half the problems we have today. I was about to say, we wouldn't have no mental health issues. We'd be good to go. But this has been wonderful. It has. I have really, really enjoyed this. I would like to give a shout out to our sister Gabby Judah. Yes, we missed her we today. We missed you today, Gabby Judah. No. Yes, we did. <laughs> but hopefully, we'll see you next time, Lord's will. But what else do you have for us? Is that it? Um, that is all I have. I will let y'all know that we're going to make this presentation available to you guys in the Facebook group so that you can get all those links. Um, you can get those scriptures that we went over and all those resources are available to you. So be on the lookout. All praises. I would like to think we've had another successful. I think we have. Real talk table. When you come here, just know the talk at this table. It's real. It gets real. Every single time. It's real. Mm -hmm. Shalom, sisters. Most high in Christ bless. Shalom.